Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Curvino with POA Network. Uh, I'm going to be talking about an app we've been building called BlockScout. Um, BlockScout is an open source EVM blockchain explorer. Um, it's currently live at blockscout.com. Um, if you'd like to contribute to the project, uh, you can do so at github.com slash POA network slash BlockScout. All right, so we support um, eight networks currently. Um, most importantly, uh, Ethereum mainnet. We also support the three test nets of Ethereum, uh, Coven, Ropston, and Rinkby. Uh, Rinkby will go live uh, early next week, and we had to make some customizations there. Uh, we also support Ethereum Classic, uh, POA Core, POA Sokol, and um, a hard spoon, one of our hard spoons of Ethereum mainnet, uh, XDAI chain. We support uh, Parity, Geth, and Ganache. Um, we are working on the internal transactions for Geth, so that should be enabled uh, late next week. Uh, so why we built uh, BlockScout? As a sidechain, uh, we don't have access to you know, uh, Etherscan. Um, everybody knows and loves Etherscan, um, so we needed to change this. Um, we're friendly to uh, fork sidechains, private networks, um, and we wanted to allow users of the Ethereum ecosystem to spin up their own full-featured block explorer um, connected to their node so they can check the balances um, of their addresses. We thought it was very important for decentralization. Um, here are some features of BlockScout. You have the typical uh, blocks, transactions, um, everything you'd expect from a typical blockchain explorer. Um, the exciting things happen when you get into block reorgs. Um, we have ERC-20 and ERC-721 uh, token support. We have contract verification. Um, you're also be, uh, able to query those uh, verified smart contracts directly from BlockScout. Um, Real-time UI, uh, API, so we have an Etherscan-compatible RESTful API, so you could port your application from um, using Etherscan's API to using BlockScout if you chose to. Um, and really exciting, we just added uh, yesterday to master uh, GraphQL, um, some GraphQL API endpoints, which also includes um, some webhooks. Um, we'll be building more on top of that in the next uh, couple of weeks as well. Uh, for our development stack, um, we're using uh, Elixir uh, on the Erlang VM with a Postgres database. Um, Erlang is great for uh, running fault-tolerant systems. Um, so uh, some other apps that use Erlang were uh, WhatsApp and Heroku. So we thought it was a great choice for BlockScout. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about where we're heading and uh, what we're doing right now. Um, we just launched a couple weeks ago, BlockScout, so uh, we're still indexing Ethereum mainnet, and we wanted to provide better user experience, such as like faster page load speeds, um, faster indexing times. Um, when a block is mined, we want you know it immediately to be available and imported into BlockScout. So uh, we're working on that. Um, a lot of it right now is we're uh, DDoSing our own node. So we're building up more nodes on the back end so uh, we can hit it a little harder. Um, we're kind of we're, uh, reduced by 90% because we keep DDoSing our node with all the data on mainnet. So we're working on that right now. Um, as far as our indexer, we've had many user requests um, to define a set of blocks um, in, on any EVM chain and just index those. It's good for analyzing certain sets of data. Um, we're also, we have our best engineer working on Geth internal transactions. So that should be available late next week. Um, and as I mentioned before, faster indexing times. Um, BlockScout comes with uh, many customizable features, but if you're not familiar with the app, it's difficult to uh, you know, find in the files where these customization settings are. So we're building a back-end admin panel. Actually, the admin panel is actually done, but over the next couple of weeks, we'll be including all these configuration settings, such as um, if you deploy BlockScout, you can uh, change the CSS colors, the logo. Um, you're able to adjust how much memory you want the application to use. Um, it'll just shrink any of the processes that are too large. Um, it's just a, a small portion of the, the available configuration settings you'll be able to um, change. We'll also be offering data export, so you'll be able to download your transactions, tokens, your coin, uh, and uh, uh, token balance history. Um, so you'll be able to do that very soon to CSV. Uh, some other things we're excited about is we have uh, our GraphQL. 
Um, we think it would be great for the Ethereum ecosystem to be able to uh, utilize webhooks and um, other type of endpoints um, and use our data uh, to build some, some great applications. Uh, we'll also have continued development around ERC721 uh, data attributes, so users have uh, better, uh, can analyze um, ERC721 non-fungible tokens better uh, right on the blockchain. And finally, uh, right now we're working on um, internal, uh, I'm sorry, input data and logs, uh, decoding them uh, by the contract ABI. So that should be finished uh, late next week. But um, I also want to thank uh, ETHPRIZE um, for their both monetary contribution and their uh, community support. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I'll be around after um, and be happy to answer them for you. Thank you.